everyone so in last lectures we have seen your radius authentication how to configure radius profiles how to create authentication profile for the radius and we have also seen the radius or radius with privacy idea we have also seen the ldap how we can use the ldap or ad credential for our gp users how we can create a ldap profiles how we can integrate our active directory with the palo alto now today i will basically start your shaml authentication shaml authentication now what is shaml shaml stand for security assertion markup language generally we use this shaml for securing or for authenticating our shash applications shash application means our cloud based application cloud based application the most popular application is our office 365 so if you want to secure these kind of applications shaml is the best way because nowadays people are working from home so there is no much security right when they are trying to connect with your email servers and everything that traffic is going through without vpn right now how we can protect how we can verify the authentication and everything in that scenarios what we can use we can use shaml for such kind of application and we use shaml as a authentication mechanism like we have a active directory and other things okay now with regards to your palo alto firewall Pal palo alto firewall support the shaml authentication shaml authentication for admin ui whenever we can log in into the admin ui we can also we can put the username and password and these username and password will be verified by the shaml identity provider we can also use for your global protect portal and your global protect gateway third thing we can use shaml authentication for captive portal we can also use shaml authentication for clientless vpn so if we you want to configure the clientless vpn we can also auth authenticate these clientless vpn users by using the shaml authentication so these are the these are the we can say service provider or we can say palo alto services for them we can use shaml as a authentication mechanism now let's understand the few other component of our shaml so in shaml you have to remember what is identity provider or idp idp stand for identity provider the meaning of this identity provider like idp so we are having few common idp like our ping id octa do these are the few popular or we can say cisco do then we have a one login these are the popular identity identity provider or idp who provides the same authentication means we can use ping id octa do one login where we can create our user database we can also integrate our active directory with their with these particular cloud based authentication providers and later on we can sync our users details over there and after that we can use these platform as a authentication provider so we have to understand the idp so idp it is a provider of your single sign on what is idp idp is a authentication provider for single sign on you have to also know one more thing sp sp stand for service provider now what is sp so sp is a service provider means let's suppose 
we wants to log in by using our gp client software with the palo alto firewall then gp become as a service provider so we are having like gp portal then we are having gp gateway these are the service provider or we can have like gp or like admin ui of your palo alto firewall captive portal so they are majorly a service provider let's suppose you are accessing any kind of email services like you want to access a office 365 right then this become also a service provider because we are trying to access this one right and we will integrate our office 365 with these identity provider now we have to we have to basically verify our identity against this particular idp now so what is service provider service provider is a endpoint which initiated the shaml authentication process or authentication process or we can say which, which initiated the shaml transaction okay now third thing which we have to know which is shaml request and shaml response so this shaml request and response these are the xml encoded messages guys encoded messages these are the xml encoded messages and these messages we will send between your identity provider and your service provider they will basically exchange shaml request and shaml response message with each other now third thing or fourth thing is your shaml bindings what is shaml bindings so this is the service providers that dictate how the service provider and idp communicate means now in this shaml bindings basically whenever we are trying to log in or we are trying to access or let's say we want we want to connect with the palo alto global protect now palo alto firewall he will basically send one url now this url basically what happened now end machine what that end machine it will basically communicate with the url now this url is the url of your identity provider so means your your http redirect request they are known as a shaml bindings or whenever you will see http 302 redirects they are known as a shaml bindings now fifth thing we have to also understand which is shaml attribute what is shaml attribute let's discuss so that is the data written from the idp to the service provider so means whenever we will enter a username and password to authenticate ourselves against our shaml identity provider like okta ping id do one login right that time what they will basically send send your details like they will send some users details they will send the security assertion they will send that security assertion or shaml assertion right that assertion we will later on use for the authentication purpose or it is just a, some kind of cookie that cookie we will basically later on present to our service provider for the authentication purpose so it it, it include basically shaml to include your users username group's name etc now the last thing which is metadata what is metadata so metadata 
is a schema and endpoint info about the idp and service provider each idp and service provider have their own metadata and register with each other using that metadata so now we use this particular metadata so when we will create a, a create a, a id or account into let's suppose we will use okta right that time when we secure the application we will get the metadata then we will download that metadata and after that we will use that metadata into our palo alto firewall for creating the profile okay so we will see that part in details don't worry so these are the few components which you have to remember in case of your shaman now what we can do if you go here so this is my okta account so i will use here okta as a identity provider so before that let me just go into the incognito mode and i will type here okta login why wow, this is coming go to google okta just go here sign in login to okta you will get here try okta right click on this try okta now what you have to enter your first name last name your work email address then phone number and the country so let me just do that so i am hemu last name is rajput and the work email so if i have a this email like hemu rj at cnets.com this is the dummy email i am using and the phone number so i will i will it's optional so i will go with the optional here and country i will select india get started we need a one business email here guys so what it will give you one 30 day free trial account actually so what you can use your office email id and just get the 30 days free trial account now thank you for the registration welcome to the family and this is your user login id now we, this is your name this is your url right so what if you will go here and put your username put your password so the thing is from where we will get that password they have sent it one email guys now on that email you have to configure your password and other details okay but i will so i have already done that part so now after creating that that part when you will log in in your first time you will see this kind of dashboard and if you see here this is the name this is my email id this is my login url i will use this particular url for logging into my account this is my my if i'll go into my setting i can get the more details let me just log in here one more time i think my login is expired you will be able to get the data if you want to change the password and everything you can able to do it from here go back go back to your de admin dashboard go to into dashboard now you will see like that now what we will do first of all we will go to into our directory here and we will add few users name add a person you can i will user type is user just put the first name i will add here async let me just give the name annu then last name is sing email address is async at cnets.com
set by the user. Send an activation activation email. What you can do? Let me just go with set by the admin. So let me just set the admin password for this user from here. Now what I will do? I will add one more guy here. This time what I will I will add here mats twelve five six two one. CCI email addresses gmail.com set by user or set by admin set the admin password here admin at one two three click on OK add one more user here this time I will use NST gen I just give the name NST then Gen 2020 NST Gen 2020 at gmail.com and what said by the user send the activation email I will when I will select this send user activation email now what it will do I will get one email for the registration purpose. What I will get, I will get one email for the registration purpose. So let me just open that email for you. So just give me a second. Let me just go into that website. Sorry, let me log into my Gmail. So I'm just opening that email ID first. So if you go here, if you go here, if you go into this email, You will see this kind of email. You will get this kind of email basically. Okay, now you have to follow the instruction to activate this particular email. Okay. Now, if you want, these are the four users that is. Okay, let me add one more user. Let me just add with it. With it Python. If I know the email ID like with it. Python at gmail.com set by user or set by admin. So let me set the password for that user. Click on OK. I have just done, I have added these particular users. Now I go into groups. I am having already, I'm having one group. Everyone with the name, everyone, if you go here, if you want, you can create your group as well here. So let me just add the group. So what I will do, give my or GP users. Go into this GP users, assign the peoples, add all five. Just add all these five peoples, click on save. Now we have basically added the five users into our group, which is GP users, right? So we have done, we have added few users. We have added few groups. Now, what I will do, now you have to go to into application, Click on application and you will see browse app catalog. Click on this browse app court catalog option. Go here and just type first Okta verify. So you will get this application first. Click on Okta verify application. Click on add. Done. So we have to add first application, which is Okta. Now, 
you can just add your groups here. Assign, assign by a group and just add your GP groups. Go back. Go back to your application. You will see Octoberify application go here. Assignment by the group. Assign by the group. Click on Assign. Done. We have added our all the GP users inside this Octa application. Journal. Things are fine. Single sign on. So you will see this kind of things. We will later on we will verify these values. Don't worry. Now I'll come back to our application. Again, click on app catalog. Just type here. Global. Or Palo Alto. Networks. Global protect. Write this and you will see Palo Alto Network Global Protect with SAML option. You have to select this application. Click on this one. Click on add. Base URL here, you have to put the URL of your portal. So portal URL is https portal.lab.local. And click on OK. And we have done with the securing now. Just add your users here. Assign your GP users. Done. Journal settings you will see in journal. These are the details. So we will not do any kind of changes here. The main changes we have to go into the sign on. Now you will see right now I'm using SAML 2.0. And if you see here, identity provider metadata, right? So what you can do, click on edit. Group is none. You can go with none here. Enable single logout. So guys, when you enable this option, single logout, what you need a certificate. So I'll go into my Palo Alto. And if I'll go into my certificates, what I will do, I'm having this G GP root CA. What I can do, let me just delete these. I not required for now. Okay, cool. Now what I will do, I'll just generate one certificate. So I will just give the name Okta CA. Set. Common name Okta CA. Set. Now I want to make this study as a root study authority. So this is like your certificate authority, which is your CA. So what it will do now, this particular, it will become the root CA, right? Now, everything is fine. Just click on, okay. So this is the CA certificate. Now what we have to do now, we have to create one more certificate, which is your Okta certificate. Generate Octa cert Octa cert and what I will use Octa CA cert as a root certificate. Click on OK. This certificate generated successfully. Copy this certificate. Now what you have to do? You have to import this certificate. So sorry, you have to export it. You don't need to put as a 
private key octa search for logout i will just select this option click on save So it's there in my desktop. You will see in desktop I have basically downloaded. Now I'll go into, into here, click on browse, go to into desktop, Okta search lockdown, just log out, just select this certificate, click on OK, click on upload. So this certificate is uploaded successfully, right? Click on save. Now you have to click on identity provider metadata. So this is the metadata. What you can do is download this metadata. Click on save as. Save as a metadata file in your desktop. Now go into Palo Alto. Now what we will do, now we will create a binding into our Palo Alto firewall. So how you have to do that? First, we will create a server server profile from your device tab. Server profile have to go to into SAML identity provider here and click select. Either you can go with add, when you will go with the add option, you have to fill full these values by yourself. Everything you have to put by yourself. But what I want, I just import the metadata. So I'll give the name here, Okta Profile. Browse the metadata, go to into your desktop. Type here metadata. So this is the XML file, guys. Select it, down, upload it. Deselect this option. Just select belly date metadata. Deselect both the options. You don't need to select any of these options. Okay. Unselect both of them. Click on OK. If you want, if you go into these instructions, you will get the instruction. How to configure SAML 2.2 for Palo Alto Networks Global Protect. See, we don't need to select anything here. Now go open this profile. What do you have to select? You have to just select one option here, which is sign SAML message to IDP. Ident so this is the identity provider ID. If you will see, this is the URL. Identity provider certificate, this is the certificate and identity provider SSO URL, single sign on you, single sign in URL and single sign out, or we can say logout URL. These are the two URLs. SML STD binding for SSS, we are using post. Here also we are using post. Click on okay. And we have created the profile successfully. Now go to into your authentication profile. And now we have to create one authentication profile go here and just add octa auth profile type you have to select here shamal octa profile now you have to click on enable single sign on logout we will click on that one and Certificate for signing request. Now here we have to call our certificate, which is Octa Cert. This is the certificate which we have to call here, Octa Cert. We will call this Octa Cert here. In user group attitude, just add here groups. This is the thing which you only you only need to do it here. Just go to into advanced and just click on allow all users in the allow list. Click on OK, and we are done with the Okta Auth profile. So right now, what I'm I'm just showing the showing the configuration how we can basically do the configuration of this thing. Now what we will do? Now we will go to into network, global protect portal, and what we will do? We will configure the portal thing, authentication, and just 
add here your oct out profile click on okay click on okay go to into gateway and just use here octa auth profile octa auth profile click on okay click on okay now what we have done we have done the configuration almost config part is done here click on commit now Let's wait for this commit to complete let me just take the access of this firewall from the cli meanwhile commit is happening i will wait for this particular commit to complete and after that what we will do we will basically look for the other part of it Just wait here for some time. Okay, cool. Go here, just type a tail, follow. Yes, MP log, authd.log. We will see the log file of this particular daemon. And here I will run the tail follow. Yes. FBAP3, SSL, BPN, access.log. I will just also run the logging here. So this, there you will see lots of requests. This is, these are for the Octa IDP and all. But we will see everything from the scratch. Don't worry. Now, let's wait for this particular commit to complete properly. This commit is done. Go here. Now, if you go to into your Palo Alto Networks Global Protect application in your Okta portal, you have to go into sign on. And if you will see your policy, if you click on verify your poll, view your policy details. click on edit so right now if user type is any user type user group is any user is any user any platform any ip address what i want authentication on the visa username and password right now i'm not using any kind of post notification and all first i will go with the plain authentication and after that i'll just move towards the post notification based authentication as well this is just a plain authentication guys okay now to show you the logs let me go here let me start the capture into this machine capture is let's see capture is started it's cool go into this machine login so go here open login with administrator and this time go here enable it Let's wait. So we are getting the octa page here. See, you're getting the octa page now. What? Either you can log in with this user. If you want, just click on back to sign in. You can use any user. Let me just put here. 
بدت پائتھن ایٹ جی میل ڈاٹ کوم یو ہیو ٹو پوٹ دا ایگزیکٹلی کریکٹ نیم گائی جس ریمبر اینڈ دا پاسپورٹ فور دس بدت یوزر سائن ان change the password it is asking for changing the password put the new password here and click on change password password cannot be as a current password so let me just set here some difficult password this user sign in and here we go just wait here for some more time and you will see after some time we can able to connect it so it is still in connecting state so we will wait see vpn is connected now with it at the rate gmail.com right and if you go here you can able to see all the transactions here for that user now do one thing go here but this now this is your hip report and just click on sign out now user has been signed out they start connecting again right control c go here and just type control c now let me go into my voice shark let me stop my captures on voice shark as well now what we will do now first of all guys you have to also you have to also i also need to know few other things which includes your what is your request and other things we are having so so generally when we are having octa or one login or your do or ping id as a saml providers or saml identity providers what they used to happen you have to understand they are having single sign on service request and when they send the request you will see shamal provider authentication request you will see this kind of message basically if you will see this message which means this is a single service single sign on service request message if you will see slo request the meaning of this request is saml provider and you will see log out request so this is known as a single sign on service log out request then we are having single sign on log out response single sign on log out response and that response looks like saml provider then log out response so if you will see such kind of page such kind of message into your logs which means this is for log out response means this is your slo response now so these are the few outgoing messages you will see these are the outgoing message you will see into your palo alto firewall log file now you will there are also some message which you will get the response or you will get some kind of response from the identity provider means these all these requests they are initiated by the service provider in our case right now these requests are initiated by the global protect portal and gateway these two guys they have initiated these request okay now what are the response they will get 
they will get the response. So first one is single sign on service response. And you will see this kind of response you will get. Shamal provider response. Sometime you will also get the challenge here. Challenge for push notification. You will also get here attribute. Attribute information means or attribute a statement which is your policies whatever we have configured one policy authentication policy in our octa portal right so you will get that details as well then we will also get the slo request and slo response these kind of messages also we will get here now just remember guys in Palo Alto Firewall, there is a demon, AuthD. This is the demon who will basically is responsible for creating your SSO request from the global protect side. When he will receive a response, AuthD demon, he will basically process that response as well. So your request and response, and these are the XML requests, guys. That particular payload is processed by the authority daemon. This is the only daemon who will basically responsible for creating your XML payload. It is also re responsible for validating your digital certificates and it is also responsible for parsing the XML response which we have received. It will also validate the signatures. So all these things is done by the authority daemon. What it will do? for the outgoing messages for shamal outgoing messages the message which is going outside of your palo alto firewall what it will do what it will create the xml request payload and it will also digitally sign the information or it will just sign the that particular request. It will just sign the digitally sign that particular request for shamal incoming messages. What it will do? Your authority demon. What it will do? It will process, or we can say parse the XML response payload. What it will do, it will also validate the signature. What it will do, it will validate the signature. How it will do the validation, validation guys, if you remember, when I have added this particular payload here into your SAML identity provider, we have imported the payload, right? When we import that payload, if you go into certificate, you will see one new octa profile shared certificate is created automatically this certificate is also exported that time only and this certificate they will use for validating the things okay that's how they will do the validation now configuration we have already seen now what i will do now let's see how all the transaction happens basically or we can say how they, they will basically do the authentication and everything. So this particular procedure, let me just explain. So I will explain here how your SAML authentication works. So SAML authentication process. How did this particular SAML authentication happens? Okay, so now here I am having my user. This is the PC on which Global Protect client is running. This is my Palo Alto firewall. where I am running GP 
portal and gateway services. This is the setup right now I'm having. And here I'm having some kind of resource. Or here I'm having maybe my website, which is CNNets. Dot com. This is website hosted into this particular server. And this is the Octa Cloud. This is your so this become your IDP. This become your SP. We can see service provider. And this become your principal, or we can say it become your endpoint. So these are the things you have to basically remember. Now, what happens? So in this process, how they will do the process? So let me just explain you that part. So let's suppose from this PC, I just want to access cnets.com. So what I have done. So first I will tell you the journal flow for SAML authentication guys, when we are running here, captive portal, okay? Because in captive portal, you will be able to understand so I'm running the captive port on my Palo Alto firewall and I just want to access the cnets.com. So what I have done, I just put the, I have sent this particular on my browser. I have just put cnets.com. This require reach it to the firewall now. On firewall, I have configured the captive portal. Just think CP is running here kept a portal service running. So my Palo Alto, what it will do, it will hijack the request, right? Or if we are running global protect, what it will do? What we will access the first file, which is, we'll create one post request to access the global global protect pre login dot esp right we will exit this particular file now what happens now on this firewall he will he will he will basically in case of captive portal he will hijack this request in case of gp when we will access this pre login dot esp so what he will send now in case of captive portal, what he will send the redirect request. We'll send the HTTP redirect on with the code of 302 towards the captive portal URL. Captive portal URL, right? And in case of global protect, login.es what we will get we will get the response response of pre login.esp file and this response what we will he will send he will give us the all the he will ask us to put the username and password to authenticate yourself and also because here we are using authentication profile right as you know, we are using SAML authentication profile. So what will happen? It will send one XML encoded message. He will send one XML encoded message. On that message, he will put all the URLs. What are the URLs it will send? It will send the following URLs. So if you go here into your Okta profile, so it will send you the identity provider URL. It will send the identity provider SSO URL and SLO URL, single sign in URL and single sign on logout URL. It will send these URLs and it will also send this identity provider. 
okay now now this pc he will re receive this particular url details and other things now what he will do so guys just remember one thing in case of kept a portal right we will get the redirect message in case of kept a portal what he will send now he needs to enter the username and password right for kept a portal policy right now the username and password is validated by the palo alto firewall and if we are using octa and all what it will do it will send the request it will send one it will just redirect this particular request to us so what it will send it will send http 302 or post redirect to identity service provider or towards the octa portal with shamal request now the shamal request or whatever request i have highlighted here in case of global protect so this below this is for global protect only guys and this this and this transaction they are in case of captive portal just remember i'm just clubbing both the things together now what in this saml request or this xml file this is a this is your saml request just remember this saml request but it contains it contains the url of this idp it is having everything so now what it will do it will just reach out to this octa cloud provider it will send one http 302 or post so it's just a 302 post request right so it will send that request or post redirect to idp with saml request now in this request what here we have to put the username and password right if we are using the post notification then we have to click on post notification thing and after that the, this entered username and password is authenticate by the octa here it will authenticate this provider username and password and after what it will send now what it will generate one saml assertion what it will do generate and dispatch saml assertion we can say this is a cookie some kind of cookie value to principal principal means your endpoint machine what it will it will generate the saml assertion and it will just send the saml assertion to your endpoint machine to your gp client which is principal now what it will do now this pc he will get the saml assertion what it will do now it will just send this saml assertion towards your service provider or towards your global protect so it will send one post request along with your saml assertion to shamal service provider to your global protect okay now what will happen now this palo alto firewall it will validate this particular response or it will validate this shamal assertion so this is also known as your shamal response guys what it will do it will validate this shamal response It will validate the SAML response 
now I need some space. It will validate the same response means now it will authenticate. Now you will see your connection is created. You will see here your GP connection is authenticated. Or in case of capture portal, what you can able to access that particular resource, that particular website which is hosted on that particular server. This is how this entire transaction happens. Not an issue. We will verify this transaction by looking into your Wireshark captures. Okay, so let's open the Wireshark captures and let's do the verification. That's why I have taken the Vaisha capture here. So what we will do, we will go on top. And here we will just try to find out the messages. So if you will see. Okay. Now you will see. We can see one message, which is to access your global protect pre login.tsp. This is the first message, guys. Just remember, right? This first message is initiated by your client towards your Palo Alto firewall. Now, here, Palo Alto firewall acting as your service provider, right? Now, what it will do? If you will see, this is the response we have received from the Palo Alto firewall. And if you open this response, so if you open this response page, so here you will get all the data. We are accessing here preloging.tsp file, right? Now, if you go into this extensible markup language, XML file, go into this XML file, you will get the details. This is the response. In this response, open mess this status is success. Enter the username, message, authentication message, enter your login details. You have to enter your username to enter your password, PanOS version, same old default browser, same old authentication status, post. Timeout, same old request. This is the payload we have received. Same old request ID. Go here. This is the same old request XML request which we have received. Now, what is the what is the component we will have in this request? So let me just open this as well and this as well, right? Okay. Now this is the same old request which we have received from the Palo Alto firewall. If you go here, I'll go here. What will happen? We will try to access the pre login.esp. Now, what in the res response of pre login, we will receive this XML file. This XML file contain the these URLs identity provider URLs and all right. And this is the format. In this format, we will receive. Now, what Palo Alto will do? If you go into your Palo Alto logs here, you have received the pre login here. If you go here into the logs. If I'll go on top, now let me just see from where it has started the processing. So trying to handle the same old message, receive request. So you will see. Now let me just tell you how this process happens. We have received a request, and this request what we have received into our authority daemon, right? We have received a request into our authority daemon. Message type is 
पेन ऑथ रिक्वेस्ट सेमल क्रिएट एस एसओ रिक्वेस्ट मीन्स वी हैव रिसीव अ रिक्वेस्ट टू आर ऑथेंटिकेशन डीमन कैन यू जस्ट क्रिएट अ सेमल ऑथेंटिकेशन रिक्वेस्ट और क्रिएट अ सिंगल साइन ऑन रिक्वेस्ट so now this request we have received here so let me just go here okay now what now your authority demon what it will do it will find it will just identify this is the octa authentication profile we are having right now from where this request he has received this request he has received from your global protect app web3 or we can say your because your rsa.mgr right let me just go here tell follow yes mp log yes so you will see or let me just show you the demon details here so you will see somewhere here rsa ssl mgr not this one not app 3 so let me just find out this demon i actually i forget the exact name of that demon that's yeah rs res manager that's the demon right if i'll do one thing here here follow yes mp log res mgr dot log right? this is the demon who has initiated that particular request guys so he will maintain all the back end logic for your global protect right less mp log res mgr dot log if i'll go at the end you will see that things so you have to be patient with that and you have to verify each and every logs then only you will get the exact result just go here let me just go at the last to see the latest transaction phase one and other thing is finished login space gp gateway right you will see all this detail for all users pre log on users with that python right we have received this request it has registered this particular user with the details right adding the information for this particular user with it and i think we are just having the basic logs here right so if we run the debug at the advanced level we can able to see the details so this demon he will inform he will communicate to your authority demon and he will just tell to your authority demon can you just create a saml request right so what he will he will find out this profile now this authentication id is very important guys now let's suppose multiple users is trying to authenticate with by using the saml right now when we receive the saml response how we can basically know this response is for which user so we will identify by looking into this auth id what we will always check this particular auth id value this authentication id is very important just remember okay now so it has created this auth id for this user now this is the url this is saml sso request payload right and this is the payload which he has created basically in destination this is the url it will put now 
my end machine, it will basically try to reach out to this particular URL. Because if you see, this is my account. If I'll go into my Okta, see, this is my account only, right? So this is the ID. This is the ID basically, which is created. And if you go here, to Palo Alto Firewall, and you will see the ID. This is the ID. This is the issuer details. He has created one bindings for HTTP post request. And what is the request type is SAML auth request. So this is the request type. Now, sign the SAML message succeed. Now what it has just signed this particular request by using the certificate, which is Okta cert. If you remember, we have we have basically also put that certificate there, right? Okta cert. So it has signed this request. Now this is the redirect request. This is the redirect request where we basically my end machine he has to go for authentication profile Okta. Now send pen auth success shamal. This is the auth ID. Now from here you will see it has received the response from the other end. He received the response from the other end or he received the same old response. Now he will start processing this response and this is the auth ID. If you will see this auth ID is similar like that they will basically, they will identify this is this particular response for this auth ID. Now auth profile is this, single logout enabled, yes. Pen auth required SAML parse SSO response. Now he has started the parsing of your the response. Go down. Base 64 payload. Receive SAML assertion. Now this is the assertion which we have received. Right? We have received the SAML assertion because it will get that assertion after the parse and SAML sign in successful. Now here you will see signature verification is succeeded. And if you will see this message, SAML signature verification is succeeded, which means everything is fine. Succeed to verify the signature, again, this certificate, and it has used this particular certificate. Signature is validated. If there's any error, basically you will see the error details here. Right now MFA is not configured, right? Send pen auth success SAML. Now your SAML authentication is succeeded. That's how see your successful signature verification. They have just verified the signature successfully. And like that, they will basically do the authentication. This is how your SAML authentication works. If anything is wrong here, we will get the error message here and we can just do the further troubleshooting so that's how basically we will do the troubleshooting that's how we will analyze the things okay cool let's go here now you will see till here we have received the response right now what it will do now my machine it will send one dns request for dev dot 70747470.octa.com. This is the DNS query towards my SAML account. So but this one, I it is not it don't know the IP address, right? In the response, you will get these IPs. So this is the DNS request, and this is this is DNS query, and this is DNS query response. And the response you will see if you go into answers, it will get these four IPs. They've hosted this services over the AWS. You will get the AWS here. And you will see after that, they will do the further communication over 44 to 34, 52.12. This is the IP they have chosen. Now they have started doing the SSL handshake and other things. Cause all the communication which is happening between my, my machine and the Okta, it is over HTTPS, see?
you can able to see all the transactions here. Now, after that, you will also see some more thing. Again, you will see some DNS query for this is not the correct one. We have a lots of messages here, not required that kind of analysis on the voice shark, but it is also, it will help us when we are doing some kind of troubleshooting. And so we will verify this voice shark captures as well. We can also able to decrypt them, but I am not, I don't want to decrypt now. I have already covered how you can do the decryption and everything right now you will see 192.161.23 when he will receive the when he received this SAML assertion what he will send he will generate another post request and this is the post request and this post request if you want to see you will get the details this is the response Send by my GP client towards my firewall. Now my firewall, he will basically do the validation. Means what it will do, it will just verify like that. See the signature verification here. It will parse the request. So you will see parsing is started from here for SAML response. So like your, you will see your processing start from here. Signature is validated, right? So what message? This is the message which he has validated, this one. Which content your values. This is the OK. Firewall is sending OK. I'm basically validating you. Send the authentication is succeeded. And after that, you will see global protect get config.esp. So this is how you, you know Palo Alto global protect get config.esp. Then it will go for now your S in your SSL BPN, pre login.esp, then login.esp. And after you will see all the messages here. login.esp then again SAML because we are authenticating both the places, right? Now you will see, okay, HTTP, okay, now login.esp, get config.esp, everything. That's how basically your SAML authentication works and that's how we will also validate our connection flow. Let me just go on top one more time. Relogin.esp and after that you will get the XML API here. This is your SAML related information. This is the res response. They like that also we can able to verify. And after that, the next message you will see here, which is SAML response. So let me just go here for the SAML response. Just go here. See, this is the response, which I have received, and this is the response details. This message, my firewall or authority demon, it will do the parsing. See, login is successful. So, like that also, we can do the decoding, guys. This is, I'm doing the decoding of these messages, okay?
that's how your xml thing works and this is this is the way we will basically also able to troubleshoot any saml related problems now if i'll go here into this machine we'll again enable the logging i'll go here if i'll put the wrong username and password what will happen sign in see i will not able to log in i am not able to log in through the octa right because i have put the wrong username and password why i am not getting any message so if i'll go here try to connect i have basically put the connection again i am not getting any error message here why because see if you will see here last login we have received the request right and after that when we have received the request he has created that request now this is your end point end machine who needs to do everything end machine he needs to do everything okay that's why we are not getting any logs here if authentication there is a problem with the authentication we will not able to get the things here i can only able to see the authentication failure message on my palo alto authority log daemon if it is not able to validate the saml assertion or it will not able to process your saml assertion code click on connect this time we will put the right credentials so Let's wait here. Username is admin at one two three. Not that one. Password is something else. Let me just put that password here. Sign in. And this time you will see everything will works. We will able to see the connection as well here. wait for this some more time connected go here settings and just sign out like that you will see the sign out message as well here control c now what we will do let me also explain the flow let me just write down all these steps what happening how they are basically communicating with each other so what happens basically in your pc where we are running your gp client what it will do it will start the gp client and try to connect bell portal right 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 now our portal url is portal dot web dot local this is the url of my portal okay after that so now this request will go to your firewall means it will send one post request to access your global protect peri logging dot esp file now the second thing what it will do sometime what happens it will also check for the cookies 
if ballet cookie found so what happens if ballet cookie found on our palo alto file what it will do it will authenticate the request if ballet cookie is not found so whatever we can set the timers guys generally we will set the timers like for two hours this particular session is valid that kind of timers we can define from the portal if you go here if i'll go to into edit you will see not here catch all rule edit yeah every sign in attempt right sometime what happens if we will change the values like we re authentic after two hours these kind of cookies we can define so till two hours your session is valid okay so if you have that kind of setup then you will get this request message okay so generally in our case because we wants to authenticate every time so there is no ballot cookie found what happens now and third thing what it will do now your gp or in your firewall which is also known as your gp global protect as a service provider what we are having here one demon which is rest manager what it will do now this rest manager it will call to your auth t demon what it will it will call to your auth t demon library apis it will call the authority demon library api and what it will do it will ask to create a shamal sho request payload it will ask to create that particular payload this which we have seen in our message as well right if you will go here somewhere let me just send pen success message receive request to create a shamal create ss request right now this is the message which we have received here now now your authority demon what it will do it will create a shamal request right it will create a shamal ss request payload and that payload basically what happens now authority what it will do it will returns what it will return it will return with your sso request payload after this your authority it will prepare the request so it will return with your sso request payload it will also come with the auth id which is this id it will also come with this auth id right till here this auth id it will also include the idp details what it will include the idp details like idp urls idp single sign on and single sign in url single sign out url all these details it will include like these details it will include here it will include this part it will include all these details right now it will send this redirect message now towards this machine right now
Now what will happen? Now your service provider, which is your GP. In GP, we have a web three. Now this app web three, what it will send? It will send one post or redirect request. Redirect SSO single sign on request. Payload to your end user. It will send this particular request to end user and that request contains the IDP URLs, right? It will contain your Okta URLs majorly here. And also your GP, your global protect, what it will do? It will also store or save the auth ID somewhere. It will store this auth ID internally somewhere. Why it will store? Because when he received the response, it needs to check the auth ID. That's why it will store this information. Now, the seventh, what they will do now? Now your GP users or your end users. So let me just type in now your GP client machine. What it will just put originally, I will use here authenticate. Now, what your GP client machine will authenticate against the IDP. Against the IDP, which is your Okta here. It will authenticate and what? It will get the shamal assertion. It will also receive the shamal assertion in your, in the XML response, right? Now what it will do now? The GP machine, when he received the SAML assertion in your XML, XML response, what it will do now? Your GP client machine. Client machine. forward this shamal assertion as xml response in http post in a http post request right what they will do, it will send this particular response payload. XML response payload also you can use here. Now, in the ninth thing, what it will do now, your GP or your Palo Alto, who is running your GP, what it will do, or your service provider, it will receive the, receive the, XML response payload. It will receive the XML response payload with also that payload is also contained the auth ID, just remember. And auth ID, and after that, what it will do, it will forward that response payload towards your auth ID daemon. Now what it will do now, your authority daemon, it will start the parsing. What it will do now, authority daemon, it will start the parsing. How it will start the parsing? So now let's see how this parsing works. So, now authority, 
it will finds the shamal auth profile it will find out the auth profile and your users auth id details and your users auth id and it will use this users auth id to find out the sso payload request which was he has generated right when he will get this particular request so what generally it will extract here it will extract the user group admin role it will also match the in response to the id it will also check the name hyphen id and it will also check the session index it will check all of them now it will start the comparison it will compare so when he will parse this particular response payload what it will do now it will compare this response payload with the request payload and if match found which is okay if match is not found what it will do it will delete that request and response payload if match found what it will okay now match found so what it will do it will verify the digital signature what it will do now it will verify the digital signature based on idp certificate what certificate will use it will use this certificate so if you go into your cert profile it will use this idp certificate here okay now the last thing after that what it will do 12 now till here your certificate validation is completed now your authority demon it will checks the allow list for this particular user for the extracted users you will check the allow list for the user into your saml profile in our case what it will do it will check the details here authentication profile octa auth profile we will have over here allow list it will check this list that user is allowed here or not we are having allow all right which is good we will check this list and if user in a allow list which means we are good to go here so now your authority demon what it will it will returns with the username with the name id etc to the service provider to work to your global protect and what it will also tell here user is authenticated successfully and we can just allow the access of the resources to this user that's how this entire transaction happens guys this is how your transaction happens when we are having your shamal configuration so if you know this particular fellow which is right here if you know this fellow you can easily able to understand the things 
you can easily able to understand the things. If you want, let me just re-explain this particular flow one more time. So it will avoid you the confusion. Okay. So you can mention this is the octa. It's a GP client. Now this is global protect portal and gateway. So what happens from this client machine? We will try to access the first, which is first file. So we will always create one. Then HTTP post request to access your global protect. the logging dot esp right now what it will do now this gp it will call to your authority demon to create the single sign on or sso request payload right so here in this request what you will get the http 302 or post redirect to principal with shamal request. What is the principal here? Principal is your GP client machine, just remember. But we will we will get the post redirect request towards the GP client machine with the SAML request. Now in this SAML request, we have the details of our Okta portal, right? To, we have a details of our identity provider. Right. Now what we will do? Now we will forward the request towards our identity provider. Let's so say your HTTP 302 may request, or we can say it's a post it's a like post redirect to your idp post redirect to idp with shamal request in this request we will put the username and password here right We will enter the username and password here. Now what it will do this Okta, it will validate the username and password. Validate the authentication by username and password. If it, they are correct, what it will do? It will generate the similar assertion. Generate and dispatch. Shamal assertion to principal. Principal is your client machine, guys. Just remember. And this is known as your Shamal XML response payload. now now this machine he will receive this request what it will do now it will forward this we'll just send one post request post saml assertion to saml service provider service provider here which is our gp global protect portal and gateway service right what now it is just forwarding this particular shamal assertion or your xml response payload we have seen all this particular transaction as well on the voice check right now what it will do now gp he will receive this payload he will call 
authority demon authority demon start parsing the parse this particular xml request and what it will do it will also validate the certificate or generally it will validate the saml response saml response is validated but it will use the certificate which we have imported when we have imported the metadata so it will validate that certificate and after that what it will send the request like auth success means authentication is succeeded and after that you will see the next request which is when http post request for accessing your in your global protect directory they will access they will access here get config.esp so that's how your saml transaction happens so if you know this flow if you know which log file you have to see you can able to troubleshoot the saml related issues easily guys always try to take the voice captures and see the information okay so now apart from this what we will do you will also what i can do now if i'll go here let's enable the push notification as well so let's configure the two factor authentication now go to into your application application here so we are having octa verify here sign on edit view the policies go here edit the policy so we are having the things here fine now go to into security authenticators octa verify click on add authenticator and you have, we have you have to add the octa verify here i have already added here so you will see the octa verify go to into action let me just delete first i will not able to delete it so what i will just go into edit now what you have to do in octa you have to click on we can verify with the push notification so you have to select this option this option is already there push and just configure a all push challenges this is the setting which you have to do here now go to into authentics and policies go to into default policy here go to into application and you will see we are having octa verify and globate application here just go to into rule click over click on edit go here and select two factor authentication password idp and another factor another factor is octa verify sign in every time sign in every time click on okay and we are done with the setup here now let's go into our logs enable the logs enable the captures here let's go here now click on connect bidet python put the password of this user
now because we have not done the setup of this application so click on setup open your phone you have to download one octa application here in your phone and after that just scan so let me just scan that particular application so i have successfully scanned enable so i have just run the enable on my on my phone now i will use this particular applications here so i have added the account successfully now click on finish we have done with the set up here now you will see the push notification will also come in your screen now you have to click on push notification put the username and password again what do you want i want a push notification click on select push notification so you will see i will get this 39 number on my phone so i have to select this 39 and i have just authenticated see authentication is done this is the hip report not and not an issue if you will see i have just got connected so guys what i can do let's sign out and let me just stop this captures let me go here also let me cancel it let me just reinitiate this process to show you the logs go here let's start the capture again because last time it took some time so we will get lots of data on our voice track so i don't i just want to get rid of that part go here now just click on connect put the username and password so i will put the password here sign in select the push notifications click on select so it's 57 so i have to select the 57 number on my phone i got that code i have selected now you will see after some time i i got authenticated this is how we can use the two-factor authentication first with the username and password and after that with the what happened let me just put the user and password again Fifty eight, seventy four. Yeah, this time it's going through, right? Stop the captures and you will see you can able to see the information here successful signature verification enable and if you will see receive a request to create a sso request right you will see all the details here saml message is succeeded signing certificate is this this is the response which we have received timeout is 600 seconds you will see all the details here. Signature is verified. See all the details here. MFU configuration, but bypass for GP users. 
profile triggered, everything you will see here. This is how basically your Okta is verified. Now, if I'll go into my Vaisha captures and let's look the captures here. So you will see 192.168.1.11, So, we have to first look for the correct messages here. We will see for pre logging dot ESP and all first. Lots of data is here actually. This is for DNS request, right? For Okta. IP dot ADDR equals to 192.168.1.250. These are the ESP messages. I tell here your BP internal is created, I think. It has not, it try right, this time packet is not encrypted actually. But ninety two one sixty eight one dot twenty three. Looks, let's see if we will get see anything. See, this is he's sending the request for Okta, right? And you will see some DNS request and other things here. And again, DNS queries. This is for LDAP, right? So it has captured lots of data. So we will not able to, sh I'm not able to find out the exact messages here. One I'm not sure where is that IP. Yeah. So here you will see some messages for your hip report check. Then there is a one message for XML message, right? And if I'll open this request, this is related to hip reports only. So if I'll stop the captures, or let me just reinitiate the things one more time. Wireshark part. Refresh the connection. Wait. Put the username and passwords. So put the password here. Verify. Get the push notification. Click on 82. Again, this is with the global protect gateway. Password. Get the push notification. This time 27, so I will click on 27. I got authenticated, I hope. Let's stop the captures. 
SSL VPN. See, this is the get config.esp. Then this is the message which I have received. After the SSL VPN logging.esp. And if I'll go on top, pre-login.esp, then I will see this XML, right? And you will get all the details. You will get your timeout, your sign-in request and everything. And after that, you will get here your next message which is logging.esp xml response page right this is the xml response you will get again and this time what here basically i have put the i have used the second fact authentication right so this is for that only That's how basically your two-factor authentication works. And this is basically all about with regards to your Okta in your Palo Alto firewall. Yeah, before going to that one, there is a one more thing. If I'll go into your Palo Alto, if you go into monitors to system, and if you click on subtype equals to authority, and you can also use here authentication profile just click on next you will get the system locks as well here also do a search with this octa profile so you will see your process will start from here your SAML client redirect. So we will get the redirect request to this portal from the Palo Alto firewall. Now, IDP, this is the response, receive a SAML assertion. This is the response with the SAML assertion we received on a Palo Alto. Then the, this is your self signature verification. Here your signature is verified. SAML SSO authentication for user with it. Success now. SAML client redirect. SAML client redirect. SAML assertion. Signature is validated like that. Basically, you can also able to see your system logs. What's going on? System logs will also helps you by looking into that information. If you go here. If you run one more command. So, user. IP user mapping, all. You will also get the user to IP mapping. With it Python, so we can also use SAML as a user to IP mapping as well. It, it's a source, SAML become as a source for user to IP mapping as well. You can able to see the details here. So that's how your SAML thing works. So right now we have seen with the Okta. So here we have seen two things how to configure the Okta, and after that, how to basically use the push notification as well on the Okta. Okay. Guys.